Welcome back YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to do install a big bore kit on your GY6 150. So I've got this 150cc A motor here and a 171cc big bore kit. If you're trying to uh, squeeze a little bit more power to your 150cc then you don't want to uh, get crazy, mill the cases or anything like that. This is the largest cylinder that you can go without modifying the engine cases on the GY6A motor. The GY6B motor, which is made in Taiwan, has wider stud diameter. So for the, for the GY6A, it's the largest you can go. It is a little bit paper thin. Never had any problems though. And then we got the uh, A9 cam shaft and the rings and the piston. And then I'll, this is actually a brand new motor. We're just gonna start off with a fresh 171 cc big board kit. If you want to uh, make it even bigger, you can do a stroker crank. If you want to go even larger than that, we have this NCY um, uh, case milling tool. So basically, it would, you would need to pull your crankshaft and get it down to the bare cases. And then you can bolt this sucker up just like the cylinder would bolt up to the engine. And you hook your drill up to it and it slowly cuts away. Um, and you can adjust the size and everything. Uh, so that, that's an option. All of these parts can be found on our website at rollingrangedenver.com. All right, so if you're new to the channel, hit the little uh, blue bell that's right on the side and the subscribe button to be notified of future videos that come out. Oh, before I start, I just want to mention, because people will probably have questions because they'll see this. This is a um, breather. This is a kit that we, you can get on our website. It, it basically helps the engine breathe. Kind of like if you pour a milk jug upside down, it burbles. If you pop a hole in the back, it pours out quickly. Kind of that concept, um, except for it helps the engine breathe a lot better. You'll notice performance increase pretty quick. And then you run this uh, this pipe up, and uh, you notice there's already oil in it because it'll it'll blow by oil. That you just have to put a, that up higher. And then we've also upgraded the brake pads to uh, much better brake pads. We have those on our website too. Also, this is our stator. Going into the Honda Ruckus. This will be a direct plug into the Honda Ruckus if you have any questions about that. Um, and if you have a uh, GUI 6 that you want built or you want to buy a uh, GUI 6 engine from us for your Ruckus or whatever, we can build them. This is actually a customer's right now. Decided to do the video since it's super uh, requested. So the first thing we need to do is get these engine shrouds off. I'll start by um, removing the side one. This motor is put together with mainly 8s and 10 millimeters. So you got these two. You get this fan off. To love, four bolts. Get that guy out of the way. I always like to just uh, keep all the bolts together. That way you don't misplace it. And then we got to get these guys off. And while we're at it, at the top you've got the intake boot. You want to move that. That's a 10 millimeter. There's just going to be some studs that stays in. This kit, uh, you can also do the big bore uh, head if you want. Um, I'm not doing that in this one. Then on the other side, uh, on the kickstart side, you've got an 8 millimeter here. And then one on top too. Your, your, um, Shrouds may be a little bit different than this. So now we can kind of like pull that out of the way, that little hose, and then we can kind of swivel this down. The, the cases open up like this. I'll show you why in just a second. Just like that. Let me show you what I mean. See these, uh, how these just plug in like that? Right there? So you don't want to like tilt it too much. That's on the opposite side. So you can get the uh, shrouds out of the way and then you can remove this guy. This is a rubber gasket. You'll reuse that. A lot of times you'll find these ripped. You can uh, get a new one if that happens. Now there's uh, some eight millimeter bolts here and then you've got this uh, um, emission control. You can block that off if you want. Actually, I'd recommend it because you're gonna get some backfire on your three exhaust with this installed. Um, so you can, they sell little uh, caps. We have them on our website, rollingwrenchdenver.com. 
or you can do it the cheap way and just pinch off the um, chrome hose with a uh, some pair of dikes. So eight millimeters again. And then there's four on the head. Do it in a cross pattern. Just loosen these in a cross pattern. Okay, should be able to pull that off. There we go. Set that aside. Okay, some eight millimeters there. I'm removing all of these with an impact. When you install, you definitely don't want to use an impact. So there's that. Okay, at the top, more eight millimeters. This is your timing chain tensioner. And then uh, actually, well, I have that halfway screwed in. Let's pop this guy loose. It's just a Phillips head, just slightly like that. Okay, and then we can remove the rest of them. Use the back of a screwdriver to pop that loose or a mallet. It's like that, you can set that aside. Okay, now the cylinder head bolts. Again, I'm using the impact to remove, not to install. It's going across pattern. Don't forget about these washers here. Okay, then you can pull your uh, cam tower off. Just give it a little wiggle. Like that, and you can set that aside. You notice how it says EX there. That's exhaust. If you want that to point down, you can do the install. And the uh, cam, you can pull the chain off. It's the old cam. Now we can give this a little wiggle and pull that off. Notice these dowel pins, there's two of them. One here, one here. And then there's also some on the back side, right there. One there, one there. So basically there. And there. Okay. Set that aside. Now I can pull these dowel pins off. Set those aside. And the head gasket. And underneath here is a timing chain guide. Pull that out of the way. You notice this motor hasn't been ran not even one mile. So everything looks brand new. Just give it a little wiggle and a pull all the way out. Like that. Here's our old, old brand new uh, cylinder. Again, more dowels. There's one here and another one right underneath. Okay. So all our dowels are taken care of. Okay, so the piston, you've got the a G clip. This makes it really easy. Um, pull, squeeze it down, pull, and turn. See, see what I did there? Just like that. Once you get that out, you only need to get one side out. You can push from the back side, like that. And then you can grab the, this shouldn't be like a major thing. You can pull it out real easy. It's like that. If you notice this IN on top, that's for intake. That's facing up when we do the install. Okay, now that you've got your old cylinder piston out of the way, see this green gasket? There's gonna be a little bit of it left over on the top and bottom. You can see here. Let me let me zoom in. You just wanna get in there with a razor blade and cut those uh, pieces off so it's flush. Okay, so here's our 171cc big bore kit with our brand new cam, A9 cam. There's all kinds of different cams. A five, A six, A seven, all the way up to A eleven, A twelve. There's a lot of different cams, and each cam has their own uh, features. So decide what cam would be best for you. Um, for this one, it's for acceleration. There's other top speed cams, things like that. Um, so the what changes the cam shafts are the duration of the cam. If you notice this one's got a real pointy top, and this guy's got more of a. It's not a slope down as the other cam. So different cams do different things. Um, so here's our old piston. Here's our new piston, a little bit, little bit bigger. And uh, we're gonna reuse our cylinder head, which I like to do, um, just because it, it adds more uh, compression. 
when you get a larger cylinder head, it cuts out the uh, an area for a little bit less compression. Although you can get heads with larger valves, which makes a difference. But in this scenario, we're using the stock head, and then we'll re reuse this uh, this uh, cam tower. But what we need to do right now is start installing these uh, piston rings. There's a uh, quite a few of them. Let me show you how they all work and which ones go where on this uh, piston that needs to be installed. So here's our brand new piston. I always start with the oil ring. This is the oil ring and I'll start by putting this into the very bottom notch just like that and kind of swiveling it around. And we know that the gap is right here. Now I'm going to it or flip it around like that and then you've got some two very thin rings they're obvious, there's two thin rings in comparison to the others. And you want to put that ring a little, little close to the where the pin goes in, there, but not all, all the way. We're going to put that in the bottom. And then I'm just going to work it around just like that. Just make sure it gets all the way around. You don't want to open these, these piston rings up too much. And doing it in this order really helps. Let me do the trial and error. So that I've done trial and error, and this is the way that they should be installed in order. Okay, and so now that we know the gap is on this end, I'm going to do the same thing at the top, but on the opposite end. And I'm going to work that around, just like that. So the idea here is the gaps, you do not want to line up. So you want to make sure that everything is perfect. So you've got a gap here, a gap here, there's one on top, one on the bottom, and then the gap that's in the middle for the oil ring, that's all the way around here. Now, next one. So now that we know, so we our last gap was right here. We want to flip that around and we'll uh, put that, the dark ring, there's two rings. There's a dark one and a lighter one. The dark one goes down here. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm just working it really slow. You don't want to open up this ring too much. So see how I've got that gap on the second ring down there and the other ring gap is on the opposite side, completely opposite. So now I can take my last ring and that's just going to be, see I've got that one on this side of the pin, the other one's going to go on this side of the pin. So get one side in just like that and then again just working it around like this real slow not opening them up too much there we go so the idea here again is making sure the the ring end gaps are not in line with other ring gaps they're far from each other so like this the top rings there's one there one there you flip that around then you got one there one there on the oil ring and then the middle gap is all the way around here so I hope you understand that very important. Now we have to install our two G-clips. Now, I always install one first on one side of the piston. Remember, the intake goes up. Uh, you want to decide which one you're going to install in first on what side, because if you're going to have a hard time getting to this side, you want to install you know, this side first. So I'm going to uh, take my G-clip and get it kind of at the tip and squeeze it pretty hard. The number one thing is you don't want this to go flying across the room. So what I'm going to do is just spin it. See how it twisted like that? You don't want that to happen. So squeeze it down again. The other thing is when you're spinning, you don't want to spin towards this edge of the clip. You want to do the rounded corner so it doesn't connect. You know, grab on and, and stop the... Uh, ring from sliding in the circlet. So here we go. Do it again. Do you hear that click? So there we go. There it is. You want to make sure this gap is not in this gap here. See the, the gap in the circlet? And you just want to make sure that it turns. That's like the way that you know that it's in there. So there we go. Now we'll put the piston in. Our piston pin. I like to keep a little cap full of oil so you can lubricate everything. You can also use assembly oil. So this is what I want to do is slide the pin in just like this. You, you can do this before you, you know, I have it up to the camera to show you, but uh, slide that down. Remember, 
Intake up, I in. And then uh, you'll match it up and you just slide your pin through just like that. Now we gotta put the other clip on that end. So G clip, really tight. And you wanna enter it in on the uh, this little gap up here. That's where you want it to, to start. I'm just holding my hand over it so the thing doesn't go launching across the room. Okay, I heard it click. And spin it around to make sure it's in. And we're good. Okay, we've got our uh, piston in now. You would want to be careful that these uh, ring gaps don't move a whole lot. And then I'm going to slide my dowels in. Dowel pins there. There's two of them, remember? Okay, and then the base gasket, the brand new base gasket. Now, you notice there's a, a longer side and a shorter side. Be sure that the longer side is facing down. And you just work this real slow down the uh, studs here. And then grab your timing chain, get that out of the way. And your piston. You could actually do this before you put the piston on if you... If you want, you can do that. Probably would have been smarter. Just take your time when you do this. So there we go. And of course, make sure your gasket surface is clean too. Now I'm going to start to kind of like lube the piston. I'm going to do it on the cylinder too, but I just want to make sure there's plenty of lube all around the uh, piston because it's going to take a minute for all the oil to get pushed up there. And especially since it's a brand new motor, it's never been run. Now I'm just going to take that oil and lube the cylinder really good on both sides. This will help the, uh, the rings slide into place. You want to make sure these ring end gaps are set. This is your final inspection to make sure all your ring end gaps are good. And then you can slide your uh, cylinder on and grab center the, the piston, just like that. And this takes a little bit of time, but you want to squeeze these rings in. You notice that the cylinder is being held up now. Okay, so I've got it in. You just want to make sure also on the other side this um, timing chain guide is not in the way. So watch how easy this slides into place. Just barely, barely, just like that. I'm, I'm just sliding it down. Timing chain, send that through. It's easy to uh, get a magnet and grab the chain from the other side here. I just use my hands, but you can do that. And then working it down real slow. Make sure your uh, timing chain guide isn't in the way. And then this is a tight fit down at the, the bottom of the cases. So you just want to make sure that it goes in nice and smooth. If there's any binding in any way, pull that out. Making sure the dowel pins line up. There should be no like hammering down on it. It just slides in. Now that I have it in, I'm just going to kind of pull my uh, timing chain out and apply pressure. I just want to make sure that the piston slides inside there real nice and easy and there's no binding, which there's not. Now, more dowel pins. They only go in one way if you try to put them in the wrong way, they won't slide down. So it's pretty obvious where they go. Now we got to get our head gasket on there. But before we do that, remember we've got this uh, timing chain guide. So pull that up out of the way and see there's a little notch cut out right here for it. It's like that. And then your head gasket, it's got the little area that holds that piece in. So take your time, slide it down nice and easy. No binding. Make sure the chain doesn't get all raveled up. Here we go. You want to hold this guy down and get this piston to the very, very top. Just like that. So you notice we got this piston at the top, but we want to move over here and see this little notch right here. 
there's a little T mark. Hopefully you can see that there's a T and that mark has to line up with this mark here. So we'll just move it ever so slightly. There we go. It's lined up just like that. And our piston is at top dead center. Same thing as like the cylinder. You wanna make sure your uh, timing chain guides don't get in the way and then pull your chain through and just give it a little wiggle till the cylinder head is nice and flush on the cylinder. See these lobes here? Cam lobes down. You want those down. The lobes down towards the engine. And then you've got this line here. Our goal is going to be to match that line up with the line that's here with the cam lobes down. I'm going to put these long 8 millimeter bolts in here and just snug them down real quick. Just lightly snug. Okay, now cam lobes down, just like this. Okay, that line we want to match up with this line. So I'm just going to drop that in there, pull my chain. This is a trial and error. Remember, we have it set to the T mark already, so you don't want to move it around too much. Sometimes it's easier to start from the bottom than the top. Okay, let's see where we set. Looks pretty dang good on the first try. So here is our uh, line here. I got all the slack out of the bottom and then like I'm keeping all the slack from the chain up here. All that slack's gonna be up there, tight on the bottom. So if you notice when I hold it down, I've got the lines lined directly up with this line. And then remember we're at the top dead center on the flywheel mark. Cam lobes are down. You make sure that these uh, marks, see how it says EX, that's exhaust. And then you've got your dowel pins. Make sure those are down. This one isn't. There we go. And then make sure that these guys are not hitting the top of the uh, spring. Just basically make sure nothing's binding up. And then you're going to slowly but surely wiggle this guy into place. There we go. So remember we have on all four of these we have a washer and a nut. Install those on all four. Okay so you want to torque these in a cross pattern down to spec. Also these here 8 millimeters and 12 millimeters. You notice that we have to do a valve adjustment now. See how loose these are? But before we do any of that we want to install our timing chain tensioner, this guy. Let me show you how to do that. So here's our timing chain tensioner. Notice that the tension is all the way out. What we need to do is unscrew this screw here, the Phillips head, and then there's an O-ring here, so be careful of that. And then you get a flathead screwdriver, and down in there is a flathead. So you want to loosen it. It's actually tighten it. Tighten loosens it. And you just keep tightening and then I'm going to carry this. Uh, See so if you let go it, it's spring loaded and it won't go back. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up to the uh, motor, install it with this being held and then I can get my bolts started. And the last thing I'll do is cover that up. So let's do that. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to uh, start tightening the way it loosens and it pulls it all the way down just like that. And I can hold that and get my 8 millimeter nut started or bolt. Just going to hold that, get the other one started. And then you'll just crank these guys down to spec. Okay, now I can let go of 
my little flathead. Make sure your O-ring's still there. And then install your Phillips screw, just nice and snug. Okay, so now we don't have any worries that the timing chain is gonna slip teeth when we turn the motor over. Okay, now for the valve lash. You wanna get a feeler gauge, looks like this, there's a bunch of different ones. Use a .004. First, you wanna make sure that your cam line is lined up, which it is still, and over here, we're on the T mark. Very, very important. See how loose those valves are after we've insta installed the new camshaft? Then you've got a nine millimeter. This is a valve tool. So you've got this square top. So basically what I'm gonna do is this is nice because you can loosen it with this guy. So I'll loosen it down. Super tight, give a little tap. Okay, so now, now that it's loose, I can move this valve adjustment all around. And see what I'm doing, I'm just moving this nut here. So what I'm gonna do is put my 0 0.005, or I mean 0 0.004. You want it to be between 0 0.004 and 0 0.005. Any of those are good. I always set it to 0 0.004. And you just want to, you should be able to drag it in and out, and you feel it dragging. This is where this tool comes in handy, real nice. So I'm just gonna stick, I'm, I'm holding with one hand here and spinning with this guy. Then I know, when I, once I know I have it adjusted correctly, see I'm just gonna hold this so it doesn't move and tighten, just like that. If it falls out, that's good, because that means it's adjusted correctly. You just wanna double check it though by sliding your feeler gauge in, like that. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom. Down here we wanna do this one too. Same procedure. Then we'll turn the motor over a few times Make sure the cam lobes are down, and then the T mark is on the top dead center, and then recheck them. That's a valve adjustment. All right, now we're ready for our valve cover again. Because this is going to a customer in Guam, I'm gonna leave all of this uh, mission stuff on, and then so we're just gonna put all this back on the way that we found it. It's always a great idea once everything, the motor's kind of together, to turn over the motor and look for any type of binding in any way. Since I have the spark plug installed, it's gonna get really tight. You're probably, your best bet if you've never done a motor top end rebuild is to remove that uh, spark plug so you can get a better feel. I've just done this a trillion times, so I kind of know what I'm feeling for. And I also did that, you know, before I rechecked the valve, so. We're good. All right, now you've got your little uh, gasket. See that little lump there? That lump goes right in line with the lump down here. Just match it up, basically. Okay, now we can install our top cooling shroud. Let's make sure your gasket's not holding it up. There we go. Now the bottom cooling shroud, remember these little notches? That just uh, clips into place. There we go, just like that. You have a screw up here. Okay, see I've got those uh, binded up together. Then on the other side, get your screws put in, like that. Same thing here. You gotta be careful though, because these are plastic. This is plastic and you don't want to uh, strip it. There we go. Then this. You gotta make sure that uh, this piece is pushed in real nice and our uh, little snorkel is in there. It's a matter of just lining everything up, getting anything started. You don't want to go too tight, it's just plastic. And two 10 millimeter nuts. If you're running the uh, GY6 in your ruckus, chances are you gotta flip the boot going that way. Thanks for watching the, uh, 
the build here. Now we got a 171cc big bore in our GY6. Don't forget to hit subscribe and you'll see you in the next video.